you know, obviously didn't anticipate being here um, in this position. Um, disappointed uh, by it. Um, understand that, you know, um, we better make some changes in terms of the things that we do. We better look at every aspect of it. Um, schematics, personnel, um, approach to business. Uh, I'm committed to that. You know, I'm not going to maintain status quo and, and, and hope that the outcome changes. That's, you know, that's the definition of insanity. Do you think that it's realistic that Ben will be back given the, the uh, cap implications? You know, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't have a clear assessment of, of the overall impact of the cap ramifications. So I might not have a direct answer to your question, but I think it's reasonable to, to assume that there's a chance that he's going to be back. Certainly um, the, the depths of the ramifications of the cap discussions. Um, I am not privy to as I sit here right now. Well, Mike Tomlin will make you privy to it. If Ben Roethlisberger comes back without a new contract, his cap number is $41.25 million. There is the ramification, especially if the cap is as low as 175, although I think they're going to find a way through negotiations with the union to keep it higher because it hurts the teams that would otherwise have to have a purge of veteran players. I don't think anyone wants that for 2021, but you still got to deal with that 41.25 million, Shireen, which means if he comes back, this almost is like the Drew Brees situation late in his career. Every year they would fashion an extension that kicks that can farther down the road, reduces the cap now. You take the salary, you shrink it to the minimum, you convert it to a guarantee, and it drops the cap number this year. But the cap number is still, there's only so much you can do to drop this cap number. And you're eventually going to take a huge cap hit when Ben Roethlisberger retires. If he retires this year, it's a $22 million cap hit. And look, if I'm Roethlisberger, I, assuming they would want the $12.5 million back that he hasn't earned yet, that he received in signing bonus money. And remember, signing bonus isn't free money. It's advanced pay for future services. He could just dig in and wait and say, I'm not extending my contract, and you decide what you want to do. There's a $15 million roster bonus that comes due on the third day of the league year. Maybe they'll cut him. That's what Calvin Johnson should have done five years ago. He retired, and they, they came after him for money at a time when his cap number was so bloated they were probably going to cut him anyway. I think Ben needs to learn from that and force them to make their decision and uh, and then if he wants to retire after the, the new league year starts and they have to carry the $41 million cap charge, so be it. You know, it's a tough call. It's a tough situation. It's a tough spot, Shireen. And and it's it's a lot more complicated than Tomlin made it out to be today. He just kind of punted on the question by acting like he doesn't know what's going on. He sure knows what's going on. He absolutely does, Mike. And you wrote earlier today about the Seahawks being at a crossroads. This, to me, is a team that is at the crossroads. Right now, they have seven players, counting Ben Roethlisberger, who are scheduled to take up 71% of the cap space if it's at $182 million, which is kind of the projection at this point. We don't know exactly what it's going to be. They have 19 unrestricted free agents. Ten of those started at least one game. We know Juju's one of those free agents. This, to me, looks like a team that, that is either ready to rebuild or I know they're in contention every single year with Mike Tomlin, but you have a quarterback question. You have tons of free agents. This is a team, Mike, I don't know if you agree or not, that very much is at a crossroads right now. Yeah, they've got to make some big decisions about who they're going to pay, who they're going to keep, who they're going to let go. Can they, can they keep Juju Smith-Schuster after the Browns is the Browns? Can they really do that? Will the, will the fan base forgive him? for his role in stirring up the Browns and giving the Steelers one of the most embarrassing playoff losses ever. And it was. They hadn't lost to the Browns at home in 17 years. Yeah. They hadn't lost to the Browns at home since Ben Roethlisberger was drafted. That's how long it had been. And in that moment, in that game, to have it happen the way it did, that leaves a mark. And you just have to wonder what changes will be made. They haven't won uh, many playoff games since going to the Super Bowl to cap the 2010 season. They have two playoff wins since 2011. And... You know, at some point, if this continues, people are going to call more loudly than ever for a coaching change. And, you know, we've talked about this earlier in the week. The Steelers don't do it because they, they, they don't. That's their thing. They keep coaches forever. So they will resist firing Mike Tomlin, even if they get to a point two, three, four years from now where that's the kind of rebuilding they need to do. But I, I agree with you. Major changes coming for the Steelers. It's more of a reload than a rebuild. It's changing a tire on a car that 
that temporarily slows down but never really stops moving. And and we'll see what they can do. But if, if they don't have Roethlisberger, Mason Rudolph, I, I know he played well in the game against the Browns that, that you know, they, they, they played a bunch of backups because they, they didn't really need it at all. It didn't matter to the Steelers. I just don't know that that's enough to make Rudolph your guy because we saw it, Shireen, in 2019. Rudolph wasn't the answer. Duck Hodges wasn't the answer. I don't think Josh Dobbs is the answer. And I don't know what they would do at that point to find a quarterback if Ben's gone. I was surprised, Mike, they didn't go out and get a backup quarterback or draft somebody they could groom after seeing Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges when Ben was out last year in 2019 because they played 14 games, 14 and a half games, actually, uh, and, and they didn't see it. They knew neither one of those guys was their franchise quarterback. And now with Ben Roethlisberger turning 39 in May and this huge cap hit, we don't know what his future is and they don't know what the future is at the quarterback position because they have no backup. I think that Ben falls into the category of franchise quarterbacks who don't want to have anyone else on the depth chart who's who's good, yeah. frankly. Who's who's good enough that makes him think, are they thinking about getting rid of me and, and, and maybe they've made the strategic decision. We get the best from Ben Roethlisberger if we don't have his successor hovering over his shoulder. And we've seen plenty of quarterbacks where that's been the case. The problem is – you're you're asking for a lost season, or at a minimum, you're going to have to scramble to take whoever yeah. you can find, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Phillip Rivers, whoever you can find as a Band-Aid to get you to the next year. It's not a good situation for the Steelers. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.